Good morning. In Revelation chapter 12, we read these words. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. One of the most amazing things to me is that the devil recognizes that time is running out. And as a result, we've noticed in our study of the blowing of the fifth trumpet that the devil has put a Frankenstein of destruction together, a war machine that is specially designed for these last closing scenes, for his final battle. And what we've gathered from the study is that because of his display of power, but also because of his deceptiveness, the whole world is wandering after him. The whole world has acknowledged his authority. It's almost as if the people are crying out as we read there in Exodus chapter 5. Who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. I want you to understand that although the devil has been so successful in his manipulation of man's thinking, God is not going to leave this unchecked. And this is what we find out in the blowing of the sixth trumpet. God is going to display his presence and his power and his authority in a way that the world has never experienced before. He is going to round off his work in righteousness. Those people who arrogantly don't recognize him, he is going to come and occupy your space. He is going to demand your attention. And this we saw in the display of the, the plagues as they fell on Egypt. God revealed his authority and his position and his power in this world. And it's through this, through this period we've noticed from the first blowing of the trumpets that, that we've had to make a decision all along. And we have a separation taking place, a separation of those who believe God and those who don't believe Him. And as a result, we also find a sealing taking place. Now, it's almost as if we've come to the last heartbeats of God's display of righteousness. And we see in Exodus chapter 12 that God comes to the people and He asks them to do specific things for a reason. In verse 1, I read, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, it's almost as if God saying to us here in Babylon, this month, today, is, is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. It's almost as if God is saying, this is the beginning of your new life. You must remember what is about to happen now. And I want you to understand the great significance of this. We can choose today to have a new beginning. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. It's almost as if God's saying, okay, this, the instruction is quite simple. Go on the 10th day of the experience of your life and give God credit. Take a lamb into your home, accept Jesus Christ as your savior. But it doesn't just stop there. It says on the 14th day in verse 6, it says, Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So it almost means now that we don't just have a living lamb. We are to take the lamb that we believe in him and believe in and to slay it, symbolizing that Christ would die for our sins. And that we recognize this. Then he says this. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. So the next instruction is confess your sin and he will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. And he will put his blood over you as a sign that you belong to him. That will be his sealing. I want you to notice this is so important. Then it says further, you must eat that. And then he says this, this is so important. This is how you are to eat 
the lamb that you have slain. As you eat of it, you must eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Here we see quite clearly that God is trying to say, the moment you take your stands for me, the moment you accept me as your Savior, from that point, stand in readiness. You are about to go on a journey that is a journey of in, in an incredible experience with God. He says, verse 12, on that same night that you've made your decision, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. He says, for I am the Lord. So we see that God is going to come to those people who still have not acknowledged him and is going to display his power in the fact that he says, I hold the keys of life and death. No God has power like I have power. And then I want you to notice something else that is crucial. In verse 13 he says, The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Dear friends, the question that I sometimes ask myself, although the devil seems to display a power and everybody trembles at him, who will stand when God reveals his authority and his power and his presence? And I find out it's only those who have the blood of the Lamb clothed over them. Only those who have accepted his plan of salvation will be sealed from the destructive power of his presence. I want you to notice something else that is quite incredible. In Exodus chapter 15, Moses sings a song. And it's a song that we are going to turn to in just now and see. But in this song, Moses asks a question in Exodus 15 verse 11. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You know, dear friends, as I said to you in Revelation chapter 12, we read how that the devil is like a roaring lion and he's going to come down and he's going to, you know, um, take great action because he knows that his time is short. But in the verses just prior to that, I read something that is so incredible to me. It says in verse 11 of Revelation chapter 12, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Dear friends, I want you to notice the way that we are going to defeat this, the devil and the way that we are going to stand in readiness before God is the same thing. We are going to have the blood of the Lamb in our favor. To finish with our study today, I want to go back to Revelation chapter 9. Even though God has displayed himself in such a powerful way to mankind, he has not left it to others to tell people about him. He has personally become involved in the affairs of mankind. He has personally approached their gods and challenged their gods. Now it is time to choose. If God is God, follow him. If not, then follow whoever you, you decide to follow. But the time for decision making has come. You need to choose a side. And one of the things that really is of concern to me in Revelation chapter 9, I read this in verse 20. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues, like in the case of Pharaoh, still did not repent of the works of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze and stone and wood. Idols that could not see or hear or work or walk, sorry, those people who cannot save you at all. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. You see, the most incredible thing about this message is that if you understand it clearly, there will be a sign in your life of a reformation. You will stop your wicked ways and you will have works of righteousness. 
May God help you to see the importance of the time that we are living in. God is appealing over and over, but sooner or later he will come to the last call. How will you stand, dear friends? Will you repent or will you not repent? That question you need to answer today.